This is Module 5, Lesson 29. In this lesson, we'll be estimating sums and differences using benchmark numbers. Let's start by looking at the mixed number 3 and 1 fifth and adding it to 4 and 8 ninths. Now, an estimate, as we remember from whole numbers, is an approximate answer. It's about the correct answer. It's not exact. So we're going to do the same thing we did with whole numbers and we're going to round the numbers we have here to either a whole number or a whole number in a benchmark such as one half. So let's start with three and one fifth. Three and one fifth is a little bit more than three. So let's round it to three. 4 and 8 ninths is almost 5. So let's round that one up to 5. So remember when we do an estimate, instead of using straight lines to indicate an equal sign, we use our wavy lines to show that it's about 8. So the estimate of our sum would be 8. Let's look at it on a number line. If we have 3, 4, and 5, and we would see that 3, if we plotted it, would be a little bit more than th 3, uh, 3 and 1 fifth would be a little bit more than 3, and 4 and 8 ninths would be a little bit less than 5. So again, if we look at the, the sum of 3 and 5, we see that that would be 8. Let's look at the same two numbers, but this time calculating a difference. So again, we could use the same estimates, except we would do 5, take away 3, so the estimate of our difference would be 2. So again, estimates are helpful in checking our exact calculations to make sure that they're reasonable. So if we did an addition and we found a number that was about 8 as our sum, we could be pretty confident that our answer was correct. If we did a difference and got a difference that was about 2, again, we could be pretty confident in our calculations. Let's look at two more numbers. Now, 8 and 8 ninths is almost 9, so let's round that to 9. Now, 2 and 4 eighths, 4 eighths is actually, can be simplified to a half. And it's pretty easy to do calculations with a half. So let's just leave that the way it is, as 2 and a half. Then we can add the whole number parts, 9 plus 2 is 11, and the fractional part is a half. So the estimate of our sum would be 11 and a half. Now we could see that for the first add end, we rounded up a little bit, went from 8 ninths to 9, and we left the second add end the same. So we would know that our actual sum would be a little bit larger than 11 and a half. Our estimate is a little under the actual sum since we rounded up from our actual number to our estimate. Now instead of mixed numbers, sometimes we might be adding fractions that are greater than 1. So the best strategy for that is to turn it into a mixed number. So we could make three holes with 12 fourths that would leave us 3 fourths left over. So this number would be 3 and 3 fourths as a mixed number. Here we could do 21 sevenths to be equal to 3 with 1 seventh left over. So our number would be 3 and 1 seventh. Now in terms of estimating 3 and 3 fourths, we could either round up to 4 or round down to 3 and a half. Either way, it's the same distance. 
So let's round this one up to 4. And 3 and 1 seventh is pretty close to 3. So let's add those together and say our approximate sum would be 7. We could use the same two estimates to show that our approximate difference would be 1. Finally, let's look at 18 and 7 twelfths and 17 and 3 eighths. And first, we could find a, a sum. 7 twelfths is pretty close to 6 twelfths, which is 1 half. So we could round this to 18 and a half. 17 and 3 eighths is pretty close to 17 and 4 eighths, so we could round this to 17 and a half. Then to find a sum, 18 plus 17 was 25, 35, 1 half plus 1 half is 1, so our estimate here would be 36 for our sum, and we could use the same two estimates to figure out a difference, and subtracting the whole numbers we get 1, 1 half minus 1 half is 0, so our estimate for our difference would be 1. Let's use this to do some problems in our problem set. Our directions here say to estimate each sum or difference to the nearest half or whole number by rounding, and then explain your estimate either using words or a number line. So let's do A together. First, 2 and 1 twelfth is pretty close to 2. And 2 and 7 eighths is also pretty close to 2. So our estimate of the sum would be 4. So we could, in words, we could say 2 and 1 twelfth is close to 2. and 1 and 7 eighths is close to 2 to explain how we did the rounding. And 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, you try B. Okay, for B, 1 and 11 twelfths is close to 2. 5 and 3 fourths, we could either go to 5 and a half or to 6. It's 3 fourths is equal distance between both of them. So let's just do 5 and a half for this one. So our estimated sum would be 7 and a half. We could show this on a number line. And plotting on a number line, 1 and 11 twelfths would be about here. So we can see it's very close to our estimate of 2. And 5 and 3 fourths, we could see it would be halfway between 5 and a half and 6. So we could really round either direction. We actually rounded down to this, and we rounded up to 2. So we got our solution of seven and a half. Try C. For C, eight and seven eighths could round to nine. And nine, two and one ninth could round to two. So our estimate would be seven. Try D. For D, 6 and 1 eighth is close to 6, and 2 and 1 twelfth is close to 2, so our estimate would be 4. Try E. For E, 3 and 3 eighths is really close to 3 and 4 eighths, which is 3 and a half, and 5 and a ninth is close to 5, so our estimate would be 8 and one half. Okay, moving on to number two. 
We're going to estimate the sum or difference to the half or whole by rounding and explain your estimate using words or a number line. So try A by yourself. So when we have a fraction greater than 1, the easiest way to do this is to turn it into a mixed number. So we could turn this into 3 and 1 fifth. And we could turn this into 2 and 3 fourths. So for our estimate, 3 and 1 fifth is close to 3. 3 and 1 fourth, again, we could go to either 2 and a half or to 3. Let's just do 3. So our estimate would be 6. Try B. Okay, again, for B, let's make it a mixed number. 15 thirds would leave us 2 thirds. This would be 5 and 2 thirds. And for the second one, 14 sevenths and 1 seventh would be 2 and 1 seventh. For rounding 5, we could go to 5 and a half or to 6, either one. And for 2, it's pretty close to 2 and 1 seventh is pretty close to 2. So if we subtract these, we this would be a little bit harder to do because there's no fractional part here, but we could do 5, take away 2 is 3, and then we'd still have a half left. So that would be our estimate. Try C. Okay, again, turning this into a mix, mixed number, 50 tenths plus 9 tenths would be 5 and 9 tenths. And here we'd have 20 tenths and 6 tenths would be 2 and 6 tenths. So 5 and 9 tenths is very close to 6. And 2 and 6 tenths, 5 tenths would be half. So this is pretty close to 2 and a half. So if we add these, we get 8 and a half as our estimate. Okay, try C, I mean 3. Okay, let's see what um, Montoya did to get um, an estimate of 7. She rounded 8 and 5 eighths to 9, and she rounded 2 and a third to 2 to get 7. Julio's estimate was 6 and a half. So what he did is he rounded 8 and 5 eighths to 8 and a half, and he rounded two and one third to two, so we got six and a half. So to say which one is closer to the real difference, let's see how far off our rounding is from our actual number. The second number in both of these is two. So those are the same. But let's look at the first one. Montoya rounded eight and five eighths to nine. So that's a difference of three eighths whereas Julio rounded 8 and 5 eighths to 8 and 4 eighths, or 1 half, but that's only the difference of 1 eighth. So 8 and a half is closer to 8 and 5 eighths than 9 is. So we would expect Julio's estimate is closer. since eight and a half is closer to eight and five eighths than nine is. Okay, so for number four, now you can use benchmark numbers or mental math to estimate the sum or difference. So try A. For, for A, 14 and 3 quarters, again, you could 
round to 14 and a half or to 15. Let's just round it to 15. 29 and 11 twelfths would round to 30. So our estimate would be 45. Try B. So for B, 3 and 5 twelfths is very close to 3 and 6 twelfths. So let's round to 3 and a half. And 54 and 5 eighths is very close to 54 and 4 eighths. So let's also do 54 and a half. So 3 plus 54 is 57. And 1 plus 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So our estimate would be 58. Okay, try C. So for C, 17 and 4 fifths could round up to 18. And 8 and 7 twelfths is very close to 8 and 6 twelfths, or 8 and a half. So in order to subtract the half, we would have to turn this into 17 and 2 halves because we can't subtract the half from nothing. So if we do that, we end up with 17 minus 8 as our whole numbers would be 9 and 2 halves minus 1 half would be 1 half. And try D. So for D, let's turn these into mixed numbers. So we could do 64 eighths with 1 eighth left over. That would be 8 and 1 eighth. And for 37 six, we could do 36 six and 1 six. So that would be 6 and 1 six. So 8 and 1 eighth is close to 8. 6 and 1 6 is close to 6, so our estimate for our difference would be 2. That's the end of lesson 29.